Today we're gonna talk about EQ, how to use EQ, when to use EQ, when we are actually composing to make our mock-up. And I say mock-up specifically, meaning composing our casual music using sample libraries to gain clarity, to sound a little bit more transparent. And we are not thinking that much about the sound at this point. We are composing, we're thinking about the music and the arrangement and the orchestration, but we're gonna have a series of EQ plugins set in a specific set of tracks that is going to help avoid a couple of problems. I'm gonna go ahead and just remind those. We've got an orchestra here. This is the orchestra, let's say, or the sound source. The square simulates the room. The sound source, no matter if it's small or big, comes from this point. If it's an orchestra, it's a bigger space where the sound is coming from. But then it emanates from here spherically and it starts hitting the different walls. And then you as the listener or the mics array or the decatry mics will pick up the sound. And that sound, it's a combination of both the direct sound coming from the sound source, the orchestra, as well as the reflections. Some of these reflections will come a little bit later, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It just, it's a combination. So if we've got the entire orchestra recording at once, them all performing at the same time, that's the sound of that room. But the way we use samples and the way the sample libraries get recorded is they record section by section, the violins one first and violins second. And then what happens is that the sound of that room gets captured multiple times. No problem about that. The thing though, is that when we start stacking track, we start composing here, we have one track, another track, another track, another track. We're just composing and we end having something like this. The real result of what this is, is a recording of that source, violins one, in that room, and then this violins two in that room. So we are stacking frequencies, no matter what we record in this room, right? If it's the violins one or the violins two or the violas or it cellos, double basses, the room tends to respond similar. So when we stack all these recordings, then we have frequency stacking at specific points. And that does become a little bit of a problem. And that's when equalization comes into play. That's problem number one. Problem number two is this. When they record these libraries, the way they get recorded usually is the sound gets edited, but not that much. That sound that they capture, they leave it as pure as possible. So for example, violins one legato. If we look here at the spectrum analyzer, here's what we're gonna see. So this is the lowest note, the G note. As we go up in register, you're gonna see the spectrum analyzer moving towards the left, towards the high end of the register. Most part of the sound is here, but still, look here, you'll see some low rumble, some low frequency. That's basically low end noise. Now you're like, I didn't even hear that noise. And that's true. It's so low in the mix that doesn't even bother. Now, again, when we start the stacking tracks, like earlier, that noise is gonna stack. It's not like it's gonna be annoying at all, but it's gonna be there and it's gonna contribute in creating muddiness. So now that we've identified those problems, how do we solve those? Well, first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna load one EQ plugin in each channel. I could load Fab Filter in each one of these tracks. I just use the stock Cubase EQ. Each EQ is going to be slightly different. I'm gonna EQ each one of the tracks. So each one of these EQs, I'm doing two things. So first I'm gonna cut the low end and then I'm gonna get rid of that muddy area. There are two ways of cutting the low end. If you are using a template, then it's gonna be more a generic cut. If you don't use a template and you load a specific group of tracks for a specific song, starting from scratch and blank template, the low cut can be a little bit more precise. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a cut. The cut is going to be high pass filter. It's gonna be a harsh cut. It's gonna be a 36 dB per octave or a little bit more. 36 is quite drastic. And basically the only thing that we wanna do here is we wanna get rid of the low rumble. So we wanna cut this area here. What you do not want to do is to change the sound, to affect the timbre of the instrument, to make it sound thinner or anything. We wanna leave it exactly the way it is. We wanna just remove that low rumble. What we wanna do then is to move this point towards the right. And when we start feeling that the sound of that violins one section in this case changes, then we're gonna back up a little bit. We're gonna go for the lowest note. In this case, it's gonna be this G here. Now, obviously, it's, it is too much and it's changing too much. 
So right here is when you can start hearing that we are losing the lower harmonics. You, you can hear that fundamental G harmonic, the first harmonic, this guy here. That's what we are losing when we cross this area. And we do not want to lose that because it's part of the sound. So that's where it would be. But now I'm gonna back up a little bit. So sometimes I do it a little bit more gentle. And I do it at around 80, and then I do like 30 dBs per octave, which is a more gentle cut, just to be safe, that I don't get rid of any of the fundamental harmonics or change the sound. As simple as that, it's a very simple procedure. Let's imagine now for a second that you don't have a template and you are starting from scratch. And so let's say that in your track, you're not using the violins down here. It's more like you're going up there, it, but maybe they come in at some like specific point in the half a melody and they go up here. This is the lowest that you're gonna have the violins at. So if that is the case, then you can do, instead of a generic cut, you can be a little bit more specific. That would apply again when you are not using a template, when you are starting from scratch, or when you are EQing specific instruments, even when you have a template for that specific song, which is a little bit tricky because you have to remember that you EQed them and then maybe you did something like this. and you brought it up at 270. And then the day after when you're composing another song and you're using the low register, now you are clearly cutting too much. Or maybe you are using the patterns up here. That's all you want. And then next day you're composing, and you forgot that you put, if you're using a template, that you EQ'd this up here and you're like, okay. And you wonder why this sounds so weird, right? You cut, you're cutting all these. You're cutting all the body of those, you know, lower register strings. So cut the low end generic if you're using a template, that's what I do. Specific if you wanna be a little bit more specific for one specific song, or if you don't use a template. Now, second thing, this is the one that's a little bit more tricky in here, you'll have to use your ear a little bit. Before I do that, I'll have to compose a little bit because I need something that's a little bit orchestrated to show you what I mean. the one of the main elements and we have the cellos underneath horns and cellos they sound like this without the cellos With. just the cellos without the horns The good thing is that the horns are sitting here, or here, if you've got this image flipped over the left and the cellos over the right. That helps creating separation, but still we have some frequency stacking. It's the same range. It's a different chamber, which helps separating the two ideas, but still the cellos are there trying to find to cut through a little bit for us to be able to hear that, but we don't hear it that much. And by the way, this is the way it's supposed to be. We don't have to 
try and make the cello sound super clear but because there's a little bit of frequency stacking we can identify that we can do a little bit of eq just to clean up the sound a tiny bit for those two sounds to gain a little tiny bit of separation which is going to be very subtle but when we do this in every single track it's going to be a meaningful change so now we are here we're going to try to get rid of the muddiness in the mid low range and this is usually from 200 to 300 maybe 400 cycles that is where muddiness and frequency stacking in the mid low end happens one we're going to try to identify the frequency that's the muddy frequency the annoying frequency the one that we want to you know cut a little bit and then we're gonna cut that little bit 3 dB is max 3 dB is the limit for the noticeable on your iPhone or your phone you turn up the volume and you go up one step usually it's like 3 dB 3 dB 3 dB 3 dB and you can notice if there's something going on in your mix when you're composing orchestral music and you have to tweak things in terms of EQ and do things drastic like adding 4 dB or 6 dB or 10 dB or cutting 12 dB that is most likely it's a, an arrangement mistake it should have been fixed during the composing process not during the mixing unless you are going for a hybrid sound and you don't care and you're doing things that are a little more, more drastic on purpose because you are after that specific sound you, you know exactly what you are doing but when it comes to just getting rid of muddiness which is what we're gonna do now it shouldn't be more than 3 dB but the annoying frequency which one is in terms of identifying sonically which one it is it is the one that makes the sound sound less clear and also hides the other instruments that are playing in the same range so for example here we're gonna IQ the horns we're gonna try to find the muddy frequency in the horns and then bring it down a little bit to clear up that sound a little bit the first thing that we would do would be to cut a little bit there around 50 all right cool now we're gonna bring up the gain we're gonna bring up the cue to narrow it and then we're gonna try and find the mild frequency at some point between two to three fifty or four hundred cycles once we find that frequency we're gonna bring back the cue and then we're gonna cut a little bit minus one minus two minus three dbs that's how much we're gonna cut if it feels that we are cutting too bad then we're gonna bring up the cue a little bit so we don't take as many frequencies so let's get this started <laughs> And while I'm doing that, try to remember and identify that cello sound. How does it sound? So try and focus on that sound and at what point when I'm moving this, when it is harder to hear and listen to identify the cellos. Something to take into consideration. Be careful when you are doing this because sometimes you're like, oh, this is the annoying frequency because sonically you hear a change in sound and sometimes because you are hitting a specific harmonic of that note. So for example, here at the beginning at the first note, on the C note, if I place it here or here, we're gonna bring up that harmonic and we're gonna hear a big change in sound. Right here. There's another one here. So be careful with that. Sometimes it feels like you found the annoying frequency and it's just that it naturally brought up one of the main harmonics. So be careful with that. I would say it is um, around 280. So now the next step is easy. We're gonna bring down the Q bring this down at minus one minus two and let's listen to these horns i'll bypass this in and out i'm just gonna do one long note so you can hear When bypassing to test the difference, try to not bypass at the change from one note to the next note. You're not gonna hear difference because difference is very subtle. So bypass at the middle of a note. When it's yellow, it's bypassed. When it's gray, plugin is active. So you're gonna hear it a little bit thinner. And when I deactivate it, you hear the full sound. Thinner sometimes it's like, ah, I prefer this. But in the context of an entire mock-up where you've got 20, 30, 100 tracks going at the same time, sometimes too thick of a sound in each one of these tracks is going to create muddiness. So this type of thinning the sound a little bit, it actually helps. So I'm gonna sound thinner here and thicker here. We're going for that thinner sound. <laughs> So 
And if you're like, I barely hear the difference, it's because we're just cutting 1.9 dBs. It's nothing. I'm gonna bring it down at minus eight and see when it's like this, it's gonna be thicker and we're gonna lose the cellos a little bit. When it's like this, it's gonna be a little bit thinner and we're gonna hear those cellos a little bit more. We can hear more the cellos when it is not bypassed. Try not to focus on the high end of the cellos. Try not to focus on the shh part of the cello sound. Try to focus on the body. This area. Not this area. This is what we're gonna lose when this plugin is bypassed. still preserve the sound of the horns, but we're getting of that, that part that's like just adding, it's part of the sound, but it's just there adding pressure and it's just not helping clarity. I'm gonna bring this up at one minus two or something like this, and that is it. I'm just gonna mention real quick, sometimes we may want to EQ a little bit of the top end as well at around two, three K. That's the travel area, is where the irritation gets, and sometimes there's a little bit of stacking in that range as well. Sometimes this area, if we've got a lot going on in this area, it can create a little bit of stacking as well, between one and two. So at round two, it stands out a little bit. We could cut a little bit here. It's the same process. We are trying to find the same things. In this case, when we bring it down, it's gonna blend with a little bit more with the rest of the instruments. So sometimes this area also. It's typical when you are EQing or casual instruments to have something like this. I have a cut here at around 20 to 40, something like this. Especially if it's low, like cellos, double bases, the cut is gonna be here. Then having that mid-low, you know, cut here, minus two, three dBs, and then having another one here. It's a very typical EQ. Not that you have to copy this exact EQ or that you even need this one sometimes, but it is a very typical EQ. It's always very subtle and it's in every single track of your template as you can see, and it makes a big difference. Well, if we are doing the kind of like the similar EQ in all this instrument, why don't we just put an EQ in the master button, that's it. You can do that, it's gonna help a little bit, it's nice. But two things, first, it's different having multiple EQs doing, even if they are doing the same thing, but they are doing the same thing to different sound sources, that having one EQ doing one thing to the final master bus. It's gonna sound completely different. And the second thing is that the EQ that you are gonna be doing, is gonna be slightly different for each instrument. So that means that it's tailored made for kind of for that instrument, for that path, for that library. And so you're gonna find exact frequency for that instrument. If you do just one EQ in the final master bus, it's gonna be more generic. So that's one thing. And the second thing that I wanted to share is you do not need to do this for every single instrument. I do this for 99% of my instruments, but my lowest instruments of each section, the lowest instrument in the strings section, double basses, the lowest instrument in the brass section, maybe the monster brass parts, the tubas, etc. The lowest instrument in the percussion section, the subbum. I don't have this cut because I want to preserve all the low frequencies. Other than that, thank you very much. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Have a great week. I'll see you guys next week.